Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new and improved Colink Rocket V2. Is it going to be a successful launch, or is it going to need a degree in rocket science to build on it? All those things answered, and more, coming up. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Colink's new and improved Rocket V2. Now this is an upgrade on the previous version of the Rocket, which uh, I'll leave some links in the video description so you can check those out as well. Uh, this actually was from Overclockers here in the UK, but you can get it directly from Colink, etc. and various other resellers, so do look out for those links in the video description. Currently price wise at the moment in the UK, we're looking around about £130 mark for this, which uh, is a relatively sizable price tag, but you do appear to get a lot of value for your money, and also the construction quality from what I've seen already actually looks exemplary. Also, to back up that price tag, you also get a two-year warranty. Although, again, looking at the construction of it, I don't think you're going to need that at all. So let's take a look at the packaging. We'll take a look at the case itself, have a walkthrough, take it all apart, and then we'll put a build on it, do some thermal temperatures, and then we'll come back with my final thoughts. So packaging-wise, as you can see already, uh, looks pretty decent. Nice retail packaging, as is quite often the case with Colink, especially in their upper-tier cases. On the side, got a side view of the case itself. And on the back of the box, we've got some more information about certain features. So we've got USB 3.2 Type-C port on the front. We've also got an upgraded 92mm fan, which in the previous version, the Rocket V1, or the original Rocket, was only an 80mm fan. So we've got a little bit of increased cooling there. Also, we've got the Mini ITX form factor, as we've discussed, and two-year warranty. On closer inspection on this section here, it goes into even more detail. So it's a 13.8 litre aluminium small factor chassis. Uh, supports dual slot VGA cards up to 330 mil. Now it says dual slot, so it is a dual slot card, but you can get some seriously thick graphics cards in there. I've put in there the RX 5700 XT, the triple dissipation from XFX, and it fits absolutely no problems at all, and that is a whopper of a card. So you can fit cards in there up to 330 mils and with a depth of around about 40 mils. So it's got a brushed aluminium exterior in titanium anodized gray, also, it's got an included PCI Express riser card for your graphics cards. You don't have to put a graphics card if you want to. You can go with the APU setup if you want to. There's no reason why not. But it's nice to have that card in there and the space in there should you wish to upgrade at a later date. Power supply-wise, you've got support for SFX and SFXL. And you've also got support for two 2.5-inch two drives. So that's either old mechanical drives or newer SSDs. They can be mounted here up to two of those. And we've actually even got support in here for an AIO, although it is only a 92mm one. So certainly that is an option. Dimensions of the case, 350 by 150 by 270. Again, all of this information I'll put in the video description below so you can check it out in more detail or at your own pace. So that's pretty much it for the uh, packaging. Let's take a look at the case itself. So here we are. Here is the Rocket V2 in all its glory. And the color of this thing, I absolutely love the color. The kind of titanium color on this brushed aluminum just looks absolutely amazing. It's one of those things you really do have to see it up close to really truly admire it. I don't think the camera does it justice. Even if it was in 4K, you wouldn't really get to appreciate this as much as it is. And another thing which was a problem with the previous rocket range from some of the reviews I've seen was the sharp edges. Now this thing is absolutely fine. You can rub your fingers around it all over the place and it's just so well engineered. It's ridiculous. Normally you'd look at something like this which is cut aluminium or basically folded from aluminium and you'd expect there to be some rough edges, but I don't know how they've done it, but the edges look sharp, like an iPhone 4 sharp, but they actually don't hurt at all. They're very, very solid. Look, not even paper cuts. It's just ridiculous how well this is finished. If there's uh, one thing, if I was gonna give a star rating for, and that is the actual production quality, definitely this is a five out of five. So that's enough gushing about the build quality. Let's take a look at the actual case itself. So as you can see up front here, this is our main IO and it's pretty minimal as is the design to be completely honest with you. So you've got a power button, which is illuminated and it's got actually a nice reassuring click to it. Underneath that, we've got our USB 3.2 type C connection. And also underneath that, we've got our USB 3.2 type A connection, both on separate headers. So absolutely no problems there. One thing you will notice about the front I.O. is if you actually touch it, it will leave a few marks. And if I just turn this around a little bit, you might just be able to see some of the marks picking up. I'm trying to look on the uh, the external monitor there to see if it is actually picking any up. And I don't know if it is or just my eyesight, but I think there's one around about there. So potentially you may have to look after this a little bit more carefully than you would some, but uh, I certainly think it's worth it. It does look absolutely amazing. 
So let's take a look at some of the other design elements. So as you can see, the, uh, the aluminium is completely one sheet there, which is just bent around the chassis and all along this top area, down the side here and towards some of the bottom there, we've got plenty of ventilation. So there is a kind of air gap between the actual chassis itself and the surround, which serves multiple purposes. A, it makes it look nice. And also there is a fan towards this top section, which acts as an exhaust. So you can exhaust all the air from inside the case out through the top. Predominantly it's designed to be a negative pressure system. So we've got air intakes on the side, as you can see with this ventilated side, and that is exactly the same on both sides. Let's quickly spin that round. So both the same. So your graphics card's gonna be pulling in tons of fresh air from this side. And conversely on the other side, your CPU is gonna be pulling in tons of fresh air from this side but it's got to go somewhere, obviously. So having the ventilation at the top, obviously heat rises, so the fan is going to pull air out through the top. To me, absolutely perfect. The only downside of this is there is no filtration, unfortunately, on it, other than the vent holes themselves, which are slightly smaller, so um, dust shouldn't be too much of an issue. And also, realistically, this kind of PC case it's designed to be in a showpiece. It's supposed to be on a desk, so it's less likely to pick up dust as it is if it was on a floor, perhaps. It would have been nice to have seen this design with a honeycomb mesh due to the fact that honeycomb just has better airflow properties but certainly i think it still looks very nice and the way it's machined it is pretty much perfection so moving around to the rear so we can see this is the cutout for the rear io from your motherboard and as you can see the motherboard io and your graphics card are running parallel so that means we've got two chambers one chamber on this side which is your motherboard chamber and one chamber on this side which is your graphics card chamber which we'll take a look at a little bit closer shortly also on the rear, you'll notice there is a input for your power supply. Now this is cleverly routed through the inside of the machine and towards the front where the power supply will be mounted. So that's quite handy to have that access there rather than having sort of weird cables routed underneath. Also this section here, this is our graphics card port. And again, this will take a twin slot card, but it will fit a 2.9 sized card. So effectively a three slot card, one that just doesn't have that extra third slot, if that makes any sense. Basically a big fat graphics card. As you can see, all of this is actually machined in and all of the screws are actually countersunk apart from a couple here for the graphics card section. And actually one thing I found which is a really nice touch is all of the screws actually, when you remove them, they're all exactly the same. So if you strip this thing all down and you've got piles of screws everywhere, you can actually put the same screws in pretty much anywhere apart from this section here and the removable tray for the hard drives. So let's take a look at the bottom. This is another upgrade where we have actually now got feet on the case. Previously, the previous version basically had stickers, little rubber stickers, which you'd stick on either the bottom or on the side, depending on how you want it mounted. This has got nice aluminium style feet with rubberized casters as well. So that's nice to see, but they are actually removable. There are screws in there, so you can take those off if you wanted to. Although I don't know why you'd really want to, but I guess the option is there should you want to. Looking at the top, there's uh, pretty much nothing to see here. Again, it's all these nice flat lines or smooth curves or whatever you want to call it but this whole angle where it smoothly goes around from the top i actually really do appreciate it. the look of this is uh yeah i really do like the look of this so let's start stripping this thing down and we'll take a look inside now it's nice and easy to do we just use a uh, posi screw and all these screws are really nicely machined so nice and easy to come out i won't bore you to death with taking screws out so we'll be back when i've got the side panel off so with the side panel detached, you can see this actually uh, finished really nicely on both sides. So if for some reason you managed to scratch the sides, you could, if you wanted to, just reverse the panel. There is a little bit of machining done to countersink the threads. But for those of you that are into your DIY, that would be a pretty easy task to do just to countersink them again on the other side and use the other side. So those of you that are worried about getting it scratched up or anything, then uh, yeah, they are pretty much swappable. So no worries there. Now this is going to be very difficult, so I'll try and get some B-roll of these various items just so you can see better what's going on. But let's start at the top. So in this top section, we've got this 92mm fan, which is a Colink low profile one. If you wanted to, you can swap out for another 92mm fan, something like the uh, Noctua NF9 would be absolutely fine in there. I haven't tested this fan, so I don't know how noisy it is or how uh, efficient it is. Certainly we'll be finding that when we do our testing later on but it is a relatively standard size, so you can swap out very easily. The whole thing is actually on a tray. So again, we've got two of these countersunk screws to each side. So all you do is undo those screws and you can remove the entire bracket, which again, we'll be showing you some B-roll now. So if you want to put an AIO in there, a small radiator, that kind of thing, you can do, you can attach it to the bracket, then reinstall the bracket after you've installed the radiator, all that kind of usual stuff. 
but it's really nice to see that all this design is very modular. It all does come apart, so if there's certain bits of it you don't want or don't need, you can just take them out and leave them out. It's absolutely fine, and it doesn't affect any of the structural rigidity of the machine itself. Moving over to this side, you can see this is where our riser is for the GPU, and that will be plugging into your motherboard along this section here. So if you imagine this is going to be where your ITX motherboard is going to live. Again, really nice and easy, nice easy access to what you do find with some of these ITX chassis that to get access to the motherboard, you've got to jump through all kinds of hoops to actually gain access to it. This is again another slight upgrade of the case. Previously, the original rocket, this fan was smaller and was over this side here and actually had to live kind of underneath this cable, which is uh, yeah not the greatest of ideas. So thankfully they've updated that, so they've given you more cooling, a 92 mil fan, and also giving you a better route in for the actual GPU uh, riser, which is excellent. All of the interior is actually anodized in exactly the same way as the exterior. So even though realistically you're never going to see much of the inside unless you peek through the holes, they've actually shown that attention to detail and basically coated everything in there, which is really, really nice. So moving down to the bottom section, now in this section we've got our removable sled for the hard drives, and also you've got pass-throughs at the bottom there, which uh, will angle over. Again, there'll be some B-roll this so you can see it closer. But all of your cabling for your hard drives can actually come through this bottom section nice and easily and be routed through to the appropriate areas. One thing to bear in mind is obviously when you've got your graphics card in here, which uh, we'll flash some pictures up shortly, um, this is going to get a little bit chocker block. More so on the other side, but again, depending on your power supply, ideally I would recommend an SFX power supply of a modular nature, just so you can limit down some of the wiring. Colink do some fantastic ones, uh, 350, 400, 450 watt, although if you're going to go slightly higher at the range, I don't think they've got anything of the 600 to 700 watt range, so you may have to shop around for those. So let's spin this round, I'll take the other side off so we can loosen off some of the other screws, and then we'll take some of these other parts apart as well. This section here is where you mount your power supply, so we'll take the screws out for that now as well. So we can take all that and show you how all that works. Okay, so now we've got the other side panel up as well, so you can see uh, straight through. Hello. And really nice and easy, loads of access in here as well. There is uh, an absolute ton of access. When you get a power supply and your motherboard and your graphics card in there, again, you've probably seen some B-roll already of the graphics card in here. Even with that really, really big card, which uh, is down here, even with this card in there, there's still a little bit of room. It is a little bit tight, if I'm completely honest, but certainly it is doable. Now, one thing I did notice, if you are planning to put a larger graphics card in, there is a bracket here. Now, depending on your card, now for my particular design, this does actually foul that slightly. So there are two screws in this section, so you can actually remove that and remove that retaining bracket or whatever it is. So this is the power supply mounting bracket. So if we'll take this out, now there's actually a kind of like a, a push pin. So all we do is push it in, and that pulls out as one complete mechanism. So then you can put your power supply in this way and then put your cable under there, the power cable, make sure you brute that underneath. And again, if you want to, you can remove that handle off the top. Then when you've got your power supply installed, then just stick that back in, put your screws in and job done. One thing to bear in mind, obviously, there is virtually no access to this bottom section. So make sure you turn your power supply on before you install it, because once you've got it in there and you've got everything cabled, the last thing you want is for your power supply to not be turned off. That'd be a real pain. So yeah, make sure you definitely do that. So IO connections. So we've got our USB 3.2 connection, type C connection, and the regular type A connection as well. And there you've got your power button, and also you've got your power LED. So not a great deal to wire up there. And the cables are provided, which are pretty decent length as well. So depending on your motherboard setup, you should be able to get them to connect pretty easily. So next up, let's take a look at the fan mechanism. So the fan is in here. I've undone the screws already. As you can see, there's a pile of screws down there. So we've got our Colink fan on its bracket. Again, if you want to, there's no reason why not. You can get a, a different fan on there, like one of the Noctua fans will give you a little bit of extra length. It does screw in uh, from the top there, so you may have to play around with the screws a little bit, but generally it's absolutely fine. So radiator-wise or AIO, if you can get one small enough, you could fit one in there. I think most people will probably stick with a fan. I think that's probably the easiest setup. So moving around to this side, this is our graphics card side, and you can fit a graphics card in there of up to 330 millimeters in length. You have got a little bit of extra depth there, as you can see. So if you do have a kind of triple slot type card, then you should be fine. Um, do your homework. I will leave dimensions on the description below so you can check out for yourself. But again, this is the uh, SFX RX 570 XT, or sorry, 5700 XT, and this card is a 
pretty big, so that fits in there absolutely fine. So that is not a problem at all. Realistically, I would think with most people, if you're going to be building this type of enclosure, due to the limitations you've got for your CPU cooling fan, now this is something I probably didn't go over in enough detail. If you are installing a motherboard in here, because it is a relatively narrow chassis, you are limited on what size cooler you can put on your CPU. So realistically, you can get away with, I think it's about 63, 64 millimeters in height. So something like the Wraith Stealth will be absolutely fine. The Intel stock box cooler will be fine. Otherwise, really anything bigger than that, such as like the Wraith Max or Wraith uh, RGB, that isn't gonna fit in there. So you're gonna have to think about that a little bit. Really, I think most people, probably something like the Notchua, the, uh, the low profile is gonna be absolutely brilliant, ideal to go in there. But that is gonna limit you again, what you can actually cool. So anything up to around about 65 watt parts, should be absolutely fine again depending on which cooler you get etc etc that may change but these days you can actually get some pretty decent ryzen 7s with 65 watt tdps so that's going to be fine me personally the build we're doing in this is going to be the rx 5700 xt with a ryzen 5 5600 with an asrock itx motherboard and yeah we'll do some testing and see how the thermals go so i think that is going to be pretty much it for taking a look at the case I suppose one thing we could look at is the actual tr drive tray, which uh, we haven't looked at yet. There's basically two screws at the back here, which you just remove and try not to capture your cables. That just slides out. And then you've got this tray, so you can stick your hard drives in there, like SSDs, etc. Put them in there, run the cables up through the bottom. Jobs are good. So yeah, that's all really good. And it, a really, a, again, a really nice touch. Everything is in that same kind of anodized finish. And it's almost got like a pearlescent look to it as well. So depending on where you are, the actual color looks different. So in actual fact, it is actually quite a dark gray, but due to the camera lighting and also where it's positioned, etc., it does tend to change color quite dramatically, which I'm not sure is gonna be reflected that well actually on the camera, but actually in real life under normal lighting conditions, the uh, the color does seem quite a lot darker than it actually is. So anyway, that is a quick tour around the case. Uh, the build is actually gonna happen in a live stream, which I'm gonna be doing in about an hour's time. So I've got to get ready for that. So we'll get the build done. We'll do some testing, get some benchmarks done, and then we'll come back at the end and we'll finish off this video with our results and my final conclusions. So we'll see you after the stream. Okay, so we're back and we've completed the build, done some testing. And for those of you that maybe have paused the video halfway through and clicked on the link up in the cards there for the live stream and checked out the live stream, the build, etc., you can see all of the, uh, the issues that I faced building this. And to be fair, there wasn't that many. It actually went together relatively straightforward. As with anything, when you're building for the first time in a slightly new chassis or a new design, it's always that slight learning curve. But actually, it turned out pretty well. Most of it actually worked as intended. And it does seem that we went through the right process in the right order of installing parts so we didn't have to take things back out again. But yeah, overall, can't really complain. The uh, one thing I would say is with your power supply, when you're putting the power supply actually into the mount for the case, definitely try and do that on a flat surface and before you've got the cables in, ideally, if it's a modular one, just to make it life a little bit easier. Other than that, really, that's about the only thing which I found a little bit troublesome. Actually putting the motherboard in, was very straightforward and as you can see there it actually does look very nice and just gives you uh, plenty of room to work in. Finding some of the points on the motherboard for the actual IO can be a little bit tricky but again this is an ITX case so you do have to expect some of those little uh, quirks of the design. But overall everything fits in there very well. Other mentions I will say is where you've got the fan which is actually on the top section here above where your power supply is. Just make sure that your cables aren't going to foul the fan and stop the fan blades spinning. Um, I did find that was the case in here. Obviously, a bit of cable management would sort that very, very easily, but something to look out for. The fan itself on the top is possibly a weak point. There is a audible hum that comes from that fan, so you may want to swap that fan out for a slightly uprated model, maybe like the Noctua that we shown in the video. That's uh, definitely worth looking at. But essentially, under normal conditions, in idle conditions actually, with this, this is the Ryzen 5 3600, and we've also got in here, we've got the XFX RX 5700 XT graphics card, the triple dissipation, which actually fitted in relatively easily. Again, this will fit up to graphics cards 330 millimeters in length. So you've got plenty of room there and we've kind of tested that to the maximum with this card. It is a rather large card, but it fitted in there pretty well. Uh, no real issues. 
One thing I would possibly note is the GPU mount at the bottom. It is a static mount, so you can't adjust it. I did find that, first of all, when I put the card in, it didn't seem the fingers didn't want to quite go into the slot, so that was a little bit troublesome, but eventually got it in there, wiggled it in. It was absolutely fine. Maybe a little bit more adjustment on this back section to make it maybe go down a little bit lower or for it to be cut down lower would have been helpful, but other than that, it worked and it was absolutely fine. Temperature-wise, in idle conditions with using the Noctua cooler, the low-profile version, we got ambient temperatures of about 22 degrees and we were seeing temperatures in idle around about 32 to 33 degrees, which on a Ryzen 5 3600 is absolutely fine. Maximum temperatures were a little bit on the high side, around about the 75 degrees mark, which isn't totally terrible. There is a definite noticeable difference. If you take the side panel off, it does drop that down a few degrees. So there isn't any restrictions as such with this hole type mesh, but certainly obviously in an open air environment is gonna be a better place anyway. But it doesn't really restrict it. And also the power supply barely got hot at all. So again, that's taking fresh air straight in from this side. So that's absolutely fine. Did notice on the top, getting slightly warmer. And when we did some bench testing in Unigine Heaven, just loading the graphics card up, then we started to see graphics card temperatures get quite high. Again, this is the RX 5700 XT, which are notably quite warm anyway. And with the side panel on, we were looking at temperatures around about 82 degrees on the GPU and about 90 on the kind of junction temperature, which is like the hot spot. With the side panel off, we reduced those temperatures about five degrees across the board. So definitely there is a little restriction not so much a restriction of airflow coming in, but more of an extra restriction of airflow actually getting out. It was basically a case of the system becoming slightly heat washed. Although it did remain stable there and we did leave it running for about half an hour and it kept to those temperatures without any problems. No kind of green screens, blue screens crashing, all that kind of stuff. So overall temperature wise, it will cope with this. Really my conclusion of this case is even though it is a very nice design and all these components will fit, I would probably for longevity and also to keep the temperatures down, I would probably go with a slightly cooler running graphics card, maybe something like a 2060 Super or a KO, that kind of thing. Uh, possibly a slightly lower processor as well, possibly, or a different cooler. The low profile cooler in this one, although extremely quiet, as was the entire system in most loads, really this could do with being a bit bigger. So experimenting a little bit with coolers may be beneficial. I did have the option in the video of using the stock cooler, but the guys in the live stream decided that no, this was the way to go. So we didn't do any testing with the stock cooler. So this, in my personal opinion, is kind of best case scenario with this setup. Other point of note, if you are using a particularly big graphics card, one which is a little bit difficult to get to for the power connectors, certainly worth plugging in the power connectors to the GPU prior to actually installing it in the case. That did make life a little bit easier for me. I did find that was an issue, first of all, actually trying to get the connectors in. Just because of the angle of this card, there's a shroud that covers the connectors, so that did make life a little bit difficult. But other than that, actually, uh, yeah, I was quite surprised. Everything went together pretty smoothly, and considering I was doing it in a live stream with a audience, yeah, I don't think uh, it went too badly at all. So overall, my final conclusions. Case-wise, yes, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And for those of you that are maybe professionals or into video editing, or maybe you've just got your PC on your desk, this is gonna be a real status symbol and a showpiece. For hardcore gamers who are more concerned with frames per second than what you are looks, then possibly ITX is not the way for you anyway. There are other ITX cases available, possibly the actual, the uh, Rocket Heavy, which is another alternative, which is a little bit bigger, a little bit of tempered glass as well, so if you like your RGB, that is also a consideration. But really, I think, as far as the ITX niche is concerned, this is absolutely fine does what it's meant to do. The build quality is excellent. Everything fits together as it should do. It looks great. The price isn't extraordinarily large. So around about 130 pounds mark here in the UK. So yeah, about what you'd expect to pay for a, a case of this kind of build quality. So overall, I would say if I was to give it a star rating, I'd give it four out of five, definitely. Uh, misses out on five out of five. Certain little things, little quirks, such as again, the getting the graphics card to fit in the bottoms there was a little bit problematic. Um, and the slightly noisy fan at higher RPMs, which potentially could annoy some. So it just narrowly missed sight, getting a five out of five, but overall, I think it's a fantastic option and definitely worth a look. And also, if you do want to maybe win one of these cases, we are actually in discussions with Colink to do a giveaway on a case exactly like this. So if you do want to be involved in that, do check out the show notes in the description below, and you can find out all the information there about the giveaway and how to enter, etc. 
So I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. For me personally, ITX builds are something that I prefer to have extremely small and extremely quiet. So normally without a GPU. Having the GPU does offer up a lot of extra potential. So if you don't have the, uh, the funds to have two PCs, maybe an ITX streaming PC and a ATX gaming PC, then this can combine both rules very easily in a very small package. But really for me, I think it's uh, a little bit more than what I would personally use for something for just for streaming to the TV. But anyway, let me know what you think of it in the comments section. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.